Hello, Assalamu alaikum. This is Dr. Faraz Ahmad. So today we are going to discuss about the cementation of him. But before that, let me tell you, some people are confused regarding the approach which I am discussing in my videos of the cement. So this is the best approach. This is the approach of the BLS course and the NHS hospital. So please, without any worries, follow this approach. So let's discuss the station, keeping in mind the approach, which is the best approach. After the room, what is the first thing on entering the room we have to do? We have to introduce ourselves to the examiner. So how we will uh, introduce ourselves to the examiner? We will say, hello, I am Ahmad, one of the doctor. And my GMC number is 780 whatever your GMC number is, you will tell to the examiner okay so this is your introduction with the examiner so the other thing what you have to do is that you have to make sure that you are a safe doctor so how you will make sure that you are a safe doctor you will loudly say examiner as you may have taken all the universal precautions because this is your exam this is not your real patient so you have to just verbalize to the examiner to make sure that you know the first step of reaching the patient so this is the first step that we should take the precautionary or the safety measures. All right. So we will uh, talk. We will uh, verbalize the examiner. Assume I have taken all the universal precautions. So after this, we will move toward the patient, and our patient in this case is the same man. So we will move toward the patient. We will introduce ourselves, and we will acknowledge the patient. So how we will introduce? We will say. We will say hello. It's Ahmad, one of the doctor at this department. I can see you are not comfortable as patient will be in pain and patient will not be comfortable we will we will say i can see you are not comfortable could you please confirm your full name and age for me patient will say julia doctor and my age is 34 year old all right and after this we will move toward the history of the patient we will ask like please tell me what happened to you then julia will say doctor i have pain in my tummy when patient will say doctor i have pain we have to take complete history of pain we have to take uh, we have to complete the socrates okay keep in mind this is a post c-section post delivery patient and you have to rule out the other things as well like pulmonary embolism or dvt so you will ask pain anywhere else any shortness of breath when you have asked pain anywhere else and you have asked about the shortness of breath that means you have excluded dvt and pulmonary embolism as well because these conditions are the most lethal condition after the delivery so then you will ask anything significant happened before the pain start uh, she will tell you doctor i delivered a baby then you will ask about the uh, how was the delivery of the baby she will tell you after the c-section okay then you will ask how is the baby have you started the breastfeeding have you passed wind okay have you passed the urine because why you are asking about the wind and the urine because patient is having the tummy pain patient is having the pain on the site of the operation and if patient is having constipation patient is not passing the wind and patient is not passing the urine these condition can lead to the distension of the tummy and distension of the tummy will lead to the more uh, more pain so you will have to ask these two questions as well like any uh, you have passed the wind you have passed the urine then you will ask about the MMA medical condition medication and allergy then you will ask have you received any painkillers till now this is very very important please don't forget to ask this question have you received any painkiller till now this is very important question please don't forget this like patient says that doctor I have not received any painkiller till now and then what you will do you will say your patient that like Julia I am going to assess you I am going to assess you it will include look feel tap and listen to the different parts of your body please be assured a member of medical team is with me and he is acting as a chaperone and we are maintaining your privacy you have to verbalize this statement okay so now you have introduced to the examiner you have maintained the safety and you have maintained the privacy as well so it's mean you are a perfect doctor okay so after doing this what you will do you will look at the monitor again i would like to say that in the real life you will have to attach the patient to the monitor it's your duty 
but in the exam for your ease the exam uh, the patient will be attached already to the monitor so this is the reason you have to acknowledge this what you will say i can see that my patient is attached to the monitor so i am going to start a to e approach so in the pain station in the post c section pain station definitely air will be airway will be the patent patent but you have to verbalize you will say now i am going to check the airway of my patient since my patient is talking to me so i assume that airway is patent and you will look at the monitor and you will say that i can see my patient oxygen saturation is normal so i am moving toward the b part okay a part is done so what you will do in the b part you have to quickly assess the patient okay uh, you will say i am going to assess chest uh, i am going to assess your chest okay and then what you will do you will just listen to the chest just do auscultation don't waste your time in doing the inspection percussion palpation uh, because this is not a case of respiratory issues just do the auscultation and then you will order the chest x-ray ecg abg immediately and you will move directly toward the c part okay so then you will say julia i am going to pinch your fingers i am going to take your pulse and the blood pressure so i am going to insert one cannula please verbalize one cannula don't say two cannulas over here i am going to insert one cannula into your arm and i will take the blood for the routine blood investigations and the infection markers routine blood investigation if examiner examiner asks you can say like cbc kidney function liver function and apart from that blood sugar and the urine re and infection marker as well because after c section patient is having pain in the incision as you have asked about the score of the patient in the history so now depending upon the pain score we are going to give the pain killer okay so if you don't want to give the painkiller here it's totally up to you if you want to give painkiller it's totally up to you but if patient is not demanding for the morphine so depending upon the painkiller you will say uh, sorry depending upon the pain score you will say as my patient mentioned that pain score is 4 in the history so i am going to give paracetamol through the veins of my patient that's it so after giving the uh, paracetamol painkiller you will move toward the d then you will check uh, what blood sugar and the temperature and after this we will move toward the e that is the expoir of the patient so this is the main part in the c section uh, pain management a post c section patient so here you will say julia i am going to expose your tummy okay and what we will do we will look the c section wound for any swelling any bleeding or any discharge please make sure that when you will remove the you know cloth of the patient you will say julia i am going to expose your tummy and when you will expose the tummy a picture will be pasted on the tummy a picture of the c section wound will be pasted on the tummy please make sure that you are not going to remove that picture what happened with me in my first attempt of the plab 2 i removed that picture okay examiner start laughing at that time but fortunately fortunately I, uh, I i was able to pass him in station as well because i did it very well uh, apart from removing that picture other things were very good at that time so i passed that station with i think eight or nine marks so please make sure that you are not going to remove that picture on that picture a picture of the c-section wound will be the, will be there uh, it may be healthy wound there may be discharge there may be swelling there could be anything okay so after doing this uh, what you will do you will say that i am going to reassess the uh, score of my patient okay how you can reassess the score you can ask the patient because you have given previously paracetamol you can ask how are you feeling patient will say doctor i am still in pain okay our patient can say doctor i am feeling improvement in my pain then you will ask can you please score again for me for example if previous score was six and now patient says doctor uh, it's four so what does it mean it means that your patient pain is improving okay like uh, if patient score is not improved then you what you will do you will again repeat the paracetamol or you can add the morphine as well please keep in mind initially you have to give the paracetamol patient uh, pain is not improving 
or patient pain is improved then you will again you can again give the paracetamol after four hours but if patient pain has increased or patient initial pain score was above 8 9 or 10 patient initial score was 8 9 or 10 so in the start you can directly give the morphine as well okay so after this the other important part is this you will say julia i am going to assess your private area uh, i will look for any bleed discharge and i will insert the catheter as well so here we will insert the catheter and we will explain that why we are going to insert the catheter like if you develop any urinary retention this can worsen your pain okay so we will explain that why we want to insert the catheter this is the scenario which come exam of me patient was not demanding morphine i start with paracetamol and patient said that my pain is not improved then i give my patient the cocodamol okay and patient said oh doctor my pain is absolutely fine okay but there comes few times that patient demands morphine please give me morphine please give me morphine when you will enter the room patient will start saying doctor give me morphine doctor give me morphine so in this scenario what you have to do okay julia i am here i am here to help you definitely we will manage your pain as per the protocols but before this can he takes uh, can he ask some questions you will take history you will do a b c d e and if patient keeps on demanding morphine you will say julia i am going to give you painkiller as per the pain ladder okay or you can say painkiller as per the pain ladder uh, as per the hospital protocol okay then you will say as you have not received painkiller yet so i will give you paracetamol or the nsaids in combination please be assured that i am here you have to reassure your patient if patient is demanding the morphine you have to reassure you have to say that i am with you i am here i am not going anywhere uh, i will keep on reassessing your pain if your pain is not improved in the 30 minutes definitely we will give you the morphine or we will give you the something stronger than that okay so you have to verbalize in this way or you can say in other way julia <coughs> as you are demanding for morphine the reason we are not giving you the morphine is that because morphine has some side effects it can affect you and your baby as well and then you will say that the most serious and the common side effect is the constipation so unfortunately if you develop constipation so uh, as you have already stitches on your tummy and if you develop constipation uh, it will lead to the distension of your tummy as you have stitches on the tummy so it will lead to increase in your pain so when you will explain your patient in a very gentle way in this way patient will start understanding and patient will not demand the morphine patient will say okay doctor give me the painkiller whatever you want please be assured that you are very good in the explaining the condition to your patient what is the first explanation as you have not taken any painkiller yet so let's start from the uh, uh, basic painkiller i am here with you uh, i am not going anywhere if your painkiller pain is not improved with this basic painkiller definitely we will give you something stronger the other explanation is that uh, the reason we are not interested in giving you the uh, morphine is that uh, you have stitches on your tummy okay so the side effect of the morphine is that it can cause the constipation to you unfortunately if you develop constipation it can lead to the distension of your tummy and it can increase the pain because you have stitches on your tummy please please explain your patient in this way so if you will explain in this way definitely patients are very understanding in united kingdom they will understand it so like your patient is okay that please don't give me the morphine you will give the uh, painkiller as per the hospital protocol you will make sure that your patient has understand you then uh, patient will become stable okay and now you will explain the condition and management what you have done then you will say that we will admit you and we will can do the further investigation i will involve the, my senior if patient is not you know agreed and patient is still insisting that give me morphine give me morphine give me morphine so then what you will do you will say yes we can give you morphine with my senior consultation so let me call my senior always involve senior for the morphine okay so after this you have to give the advice on the triggers of the disease 
disease over here is the pain in the stitches and the triggers are the constipation uh, uh, distension not passing the wind and the urine retention so you will give the safety netting as well so this is the way you have to done the post c-section pain management station please make sure that you have to follow the approach as per the patient demand the patient has started demanding morphine from the start i have told you the approach and if patient is not demanding the morphine i have told you the approach please follow these approaches and i am pretty sure that if you follow these approaches you will get very very good marks in your exam thank you very much